Hi, this is PDF Berserk Arcade at berserkarcade.com, and this is part eight of the Community Challenge number one breakout tutorial series. And in this series, it's pretty much the end of it. Uh, the last thing that I really wanted to implement was a way to be able to tell when all the blocks have disappeared and uh, basically trigger some event that you're going to be using to go on to the next level. Now, we have covered um, in previous tutorials how to get from one level to the other, so I'm not going to waste time with that, but I do want to. I go over a quick and easy way to well catch when there's no more blocks left. Uh, so to start off with, I'm just going to go into actual Unity here, and we'll just zoom in a bit. Actually, let's just go ahead and switch to the game view. I have all these blocks here, and the way I want to build my level is I don't want to have to really keep track of any of these blocks except for the fact that I'm going to be putting these in rows and possibly columns. Or maybe I'm, you know, making a picture of Elvis or something up here out of all the different colors. Uh, but I don't really want to have to be conscientious about the actual blocks in my project. Uh, so I want some automatic way of gathering all these blocks uh, into some sort of list or a collection. Uh, so what I'm actually going to do is come into Mono Develop. And up at the top here, I've added a using statement, uh, system collections generic. Uh, this is the one we're going to need to use our iList, and we've used an iList before in previous tutorials. And to start off with, I am going to make it public simply because I want to be able to look at it in the inspector, uh, just for demonstration purposes, to show that you know it's actually working. And the type is actually going to be list, and then you want these greater and less than signs, which denotes a generic or a type that's going to be put in there. And for now, I'm just going to use game objects because well, our blocks are just game objects. And I'm just going to call these blocks. And I'm just going to end the line there. And then I come down into my awake function. And right after we're done assigning our transform or caching it, I'm going to go ahead and say uh, blocks is equal to, sorry, I spelled it wrong. Blocks is equal to new, uh, am I spelling it wrong again? There we go, list game object. And you could put it up here. I just have a tendency to like putting it down here. Uh, quite often in my own projects, even stuff like this here, uh, at least not the public stuff, uh, I put down here as well. But anyway, that's just my personal style. Uh, next, I'm looking down into the start. And I want to do it right before reset ball. And what I want to do is actually have some sort of command that goes out, grabs all of our blocks, and adds them to our little list here. And it's pretty easy to do because if we actually select one of our blocks, uh, we'll notice that we actually tag them with block and all of them are tagged this way. Uh, at least they should be. So I'm going to go ahead and close that down, head back into Unity. And in order to get all of the blocks that are tagged this way and add them to our list, we can just say blocks.add. And you'll notice there's two different ads here. There's add, which takes a single game object and adds it in. And that's fine. We can actually iterate through all the blocks in our scene and add them one by one. Uh, but then there's also this add range uh, where we can actually add another collection of blocks. And now collections can be quite a few different things. Uh, in the case that we're going to be using, it's going to be an array that's returned uh, through a Unity function. So we're going to have Unity grab an array of all these blocks and pass them back to us. So I'm going to pick add range. And as soon as we put that little parenthesis there, we'll notice that it's looking for an iEnumerable game object collection. Uh, basically, all we have to do is just pass in the actual collection of our blocks. So how do we tell Unity to give us a collection of these blocks? Uh, we've used this before as well for our targeting system. Uh, game object dot find objects with tag. You want the plural one here. And the tag we're actually looking for is block. I believe that's how I spelt it. And I just like to leave a little bit of space here. It just kind of makes it stand out a little bit more to me. Uh, but capitalization counts here, so make sure you get that right. And we don't actually need any properties or anything else off that, because since we're just trying to return the actual game objects themselves. Now take note here that we are making a list of game objects, so you have to return game objects. If we had made this list uh, transforms, then we'd have to return the transform attached to each of these uh, game objects. And let me see, I can't seem to access it, but uh, we'd have to find some way to actually return them uh, as, as a transform. But we're not because we're using game objects. And I think actually that should be it. We should be able to populate our list now. 
So I'm going to come over into Unity. I'm not getting any errors. Uh, I'm going to shrink these up. I want to select my ball. And here we go. We have our blocks array down here. And if we open it up, I'm going to shrink some of these others down just so uh, we can see a little bit better. Uh, when we open this up, it just says size 0. But if we start the game, I'm going to pause it right away. Uh, we notice it jumps to 24, and there's just a bunch of blocks in there. Now, you really don't have any idea of which one's which, uh, which is fine because for our game, we really just don't care. We just want to know uh, how many blocks there are, really. Or, well, yeah, I guess we'll probably go about it another way since we really have to keep track of how many blocks there are and not exactly uh, keep an array, or in this case, a list of the actual blocks themselves. But we've already started this way, and it's almost done, so let's just keep doing it this way. Uh, but you can select these blocks in the list, and they actually do show you the blocks in your hierarchy. And if you were to come over to the scene view, uh, and you start clicking around, you notice that you can't actually select these blocks up here. So it is actually pointing to the actual blocks in our scene. So great, we got a list of them. Uh, what do we do with it now? Uh, let's go back into Mono Develop. Uh, I'm done with the wake. I'm done with Start. I'm actually going to come down to On Collision Enter. And let's open this up. And right after we change the velocity of our uh, our ball, I'm actually going to come down and check to see uh, with the thing that we collided with, if the tag on it is equal to block. And there's a couple ways we can get to it. We can go through transform.tag uh, right up here. And we could check, do a comparison with that, you know, the equal, equal. Uh, I tend to use the game object method more. Uh, let's compare tag. I believe they actually do the exact same thing. I don't think there's any efficiency between the two. Uh, I just, for some reason, always default to this one. Uh, but anyway, so we're going to compare the tag. And if that tag is equal to block, uh, we want to do something. And what exactly do we want to do? Well, we want to take our list of blocks. And we simply want to remove the one we collided with. So we're just going to call the remove method and just pass in the actual game object of what we collided with. And of course, we can get that just by going col and game object. Uh, there we go. So let's actually add one more line down here after our if block. And this is simply going to be a debug dot. Uh, I'm actually going to use a log warning just so it's a different color, not because it's you know an actual warning or anything. I just want it to actually be yellow. And I'm going to say, you know, blocks left. And I'm just going to concat onto that the actual, well, number of blocks that we have left. And we can get that by doing blocks.count. So we'll just save that off. Uh, make sure there's no errors. There doesn't seem to be. And I actually still had it running, <laughs> which is okay. I'll just stop it, start it back up, and uh, show my extreme Uber skills. Uh, but that's fine. I'm obviously going to have to slow it down. There's going to be a lot of tinkering as far as uh, the settings and that go, but the game itself is still functional. Uh, but let's take a look. We started off with 24. You know, I hit one and went to 23. I hit one and went to 22. And then it said game over because I ran out of men or lives. That's fine. So we know that that part's working. It is actually removing them. And what I'm going to do is actually just get rid of that again. And we want to know when all of them are gone. Because when all of them are gone, that means that that level is done and we can proceed on to the next level. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to make a function for the next level. And I'll make it private. It does not return anything. And I'm just going to say, I don't know, uh, one level. And anything that you need to do for winning the level, uh, such as maybe saving, if you're actually using different scenes, uh, you might want to have to save the player's uh, score to the player prefs or wherever you're saving them to. Uh, we've covered those before. We've done tons of stuff with the player prefs. Uh, maybe you're going to have to save the lives that they have left. Uh, maybe you're not actually doing multiple different scenes. Maybe you're keeping everything in one scene and you have some sort of algorithm that actually makes uh, these levels for you. And that's fine. You're going to want to basically pause the game, uh, have it generate the, the new scene or place more blocks on the scene and basically you know restart the level again. Uh, whatever it is you want to do. Uh, but what I'm going to do is put another debug log statement in here. And I did not mean to use warning. 
And I just want to know that this function is being called. So I'm just going to say we won level. And that's actually all I'm going to do in there because there's, you know, this, this it's going to be so much different compared to like what I want to do when I win a level compared to what someone else wants to do. Uh, so I'm just going to make a function, fill it in with whatever you want it to do. And I'm going to come up to the update. I'm going to get rid of this space. Uh, I just tend to like them flush against. And right before we actually uh, check to see if we miss, it really doesn't matter. You can do it before or after. I'm just going to do it before. I'm actually going to check the count of our blocks. So blocks.count. So this is called every frame. And what I want to see is if it's less than one. Uh, there's other ways you could do it. You could do uh, equals, equal, put it equals equals to zero. Uh, uh, logically, in my mind, I just like to do less than one in case, just to, uh, in case something happens and for some reason it ends up being like a negative one or something like that. It shouldn't. Uh, but for some reason, if we ever have less than one uh, block on the screen, I'm just going to say the player automatically won. So if that happens, I'm just going to call that function, which of course I forget. We called it one level. I think that's actually it. Uh, I do want to fix the startup here. I just, in one of those moods, be gone space. We'll save that off. Uh, I'm going to head back in and um, we'll just hit clear. And I'm actually going to try to win one here. Um. <laughs> uh, okay, well, we'll do another quick try. Uh, actually, maybe I'll go ahead and actually... Let's pause it. Let's start it up again. Then I'm going to pause it. And I'm actually going to go in and just cheat. I am actually going to go in and just delete all the rows. And that way there, when I start it back up, uh, I have absolutely nothing to collide with and I lose. I'd have to get my man in position. So well, that didn't work as well as I thought it would. So let's just actually try to do it legitly. Uh, okay. I really should slow this down because apparently I really suck at breakout. Anyway, that pretty much concludes this series uh, for the community challenge. Uh, everything was covered that we needed to. Uh, there's a few things left for you to fill in such as well loading up the next level uh, and again just do it like we did with here where you just go in you put your blocks the way you want you set your blocks up and uh, save it off as level two uh, I think that's pretty much it uh, anyway uh, thanks for watching I'm glad you stuck with it all the way to the end and uh, I'll be coming up with another video for this month's challenge anyway I'll see you then bye bye